Elizabeth Parker once said that the only thing wrong with trying to please everyone is that there'll be at least one person who'll remain unhappy. You. She mentions that one shouldn't be a people pleaser as people like to label it nowadays. To begin with, who is a people pleaser? Here are some traits that would make you one. First, you pretend to agree with everyone. You try to see eye to eye with other people's opinions and beliefs, not because you want to respect their point of views, but rather because you fear that they might not like you if you speak up. Second, you often apologize. Even when you know that it's not your fault, in order to maintain peace and to avoid conflict with the other person, you end up apologizing every now and then. Third, you act like the people around you. The fear of people not accepting you for who you are makes you question how you should be around other people. And you end up being a person you know they'd like. Fourth, you need praise to feel good. It is a known fact that people please or seek for external validation. So, if your own self-worth depends upon what other people think of you, you'll only feel good when they would appreciate you. And fifth, you hide what you actually feel. You don't speak up when your feelings are hurt because you think that it might create problems in your relationship with other people. So, you end up speaking nothing at all. Now that I pointed out the main characteristics of a people pleaser, how many of you all think you are one? I am guessing quite a few of you all, including me. I have been a people pleaser my whole life. All the traits that I mentioned just now are the traits that I know I possess. I had to get in the good books of every single person I met. And to be honest, I was quite successful in doing that too. I mean, my teachers would always call me obedient, responsible, disciplined in front of my parents. My parents would look at me and would obviously not believe them because at home I was like a complete moron. Even my parents' friends and my friends' parents thought, this, I thought that I was a soft-spoken, well-mannered, little innocent girl. Talk to my friends once and you'll realize I'm neither of those things. I think last year or so, I started to realize that doing this is actually much, much, much worse for me than accepting the fact that some people don't like me. I mean, it's such a normal thought that, okay, fine, a few people don't like me. Why wasn't that okay, I wondered. Why was I so hell-bent on pleading every single person I met? Because, let's get real, like I might have been able to do it up till now, but who knows what the future holds, right? As I was curious, I did a little research of my own. Here's a reason probably why. According to Cooley's Looking Glass Self Theory, a part of how we perceive ourselves comes from how other people see us. My friends claim that I don't have a single humor bone in my body. This has led me to believe that I can't crack jokes. Even when I do, and you can, ex you can assume how those turn out to be, I end up saying that, what did you expect? It's me, I crack poor jokes. Have you forgotten? So even though I thought I had a good sense of humor, just because the people around me don't think so, I, do, I tend to believe that I don't. What is it that makes people decide this for me? Social comparison. Especially with people who have a personality similar to mine. According to Festinger, social comparison occurs when one's attitudes and beliefs is compared with those of others. If, for example, I think person A and person B are similar, my judgments about the traits of both of them would be a comparison of them. If I think A has better communication skills, I would tell B that their communication skills are poor. B would then believe the same. However, if I bring in a new person C in this dynamic, whose communication skills are worse than B's, B would feel like they're a good talker. What just happened there? <laughs> did B change? B did not change. Only the situation did, right? In one case, B felt better, whereas in another, B felt worse. So we really need to question ourselves. Is it, is it worth it to change our opinions based on what other people think? Because at the end, we aren't the ones who are changing. We're the same people. 
it's them who are changing it's their opinions which are changing because they are comparing us with other people as people pleasers we also try to seek external validation for our internal problems and challenges on one side of the spectrum your family and friends never thought you were good enough what do you do you try to become good enough for them how do you do that by seeking external validation you think if other people value you if other people think you're important the people you are close to would feel the same so in order to get the validation of your close ones you end up getting the validation of people who aren't close to you first on the other side of the spectrum you have always been pampered by your parents and they've always told you what's right and what's wrong that is a problem too depending too much on others makes you question every decision you make every single choice you make so if i were to place myself on the given spectrum it would be on the side where i'm too dependent on my parents where i get a lot of attention from them why did i want to please people you might be wondering it was presumably my way of feeling valued and important i wanted people to think that i had this perfect personality that needs no mending um probably because then they won't judge me for my poor habits because they could have passed the bad right somewhere i also feel that you need validation from external people because you fear that people who are close to you might leave you for example one of my traits that not many people would like is my chattiness if now today i meet a person who does not like me because of this trait i would have this fear at the back of my head that in the future someone who i'm close to might leave me too because of the same reason because i wouldn't know when to stop talking when to start talking what to talk about when to talk about so just to avoid that in the future it's just a possibility and to avoid that i try to change today but is that what we really should be doing i spoke about this point with my friends and they were like are you stupid we would never hold you being chatty against you we know that's who you are and we we've accepted it we won't hold it against you that made me realize that people who matter will love you unconditionally they always will so why should we bother about people who don't matter as much would think now if you do want to change how do you do that here are some steps that can help you accomplish it first except that not everybody is going to love you in any given situation people can react in three different ways they can either support you be jealous of you or not support you accept that and you'll understand that not everybody is going to love you second trust and follow your internal receiver do what you think is right rather than what other people think is right do what you want to do rather than what other people expect you to do step 3 conquer the fear that something might go wrong the future what the future holds is undecided even we don't know that so rather take responsibilities for your own decisions rather than what decisions you've taken because of other people so conquer the fear that something might go wrong and last step step 4 learn how to say no without self judgment you need to put yourself before others you need to put your feelings before others it is okay to say no i am going to repeat this line it is okay to say no accept that and you will be good to go having realized all this now It is also important to recognize that falling into the approval trap can be very easy. <laughs> Take it from someone who's a part of it. And once you get into it, it's a vicious cycle. But just remember that you are living for yourself. So be a person who pleases you rather than a person who pleases everyone. Thank you.